Hello, greetings in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Welcome to Biblical Sexual Purity. I'm Brother Zana David. Please, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, I want you to subscribe to this channel. This message has been given to me since on the 8th of July 2018. I actually posted it on my website, biblicalsexualpurity.com, but I haven't recorded a video. I say okay let me record a video and explain some of these things uh, so that more people can hear this message and be wiser and those who haven't been wise at all can hear and be wise this message is about a vision that i had some years ago i i saw in a vision the holy spirit revealed some secrets to me in this vision, I was taken up in the sky, in the spirit. It was like the roof and ceilings of uh, buildings were open. And I was seeing from above what was actually happening in, inside the buildings. And the Holy Spirit was speaking to me. So I wrote the things I saw down. In, in a vision, I saw someone but I did not know whether the person was a male or a female. Ropes were tied on the person's hands and legs. The person's hands, the legs, there were ropes tied. And they were actually dragging the person to tear the person apart. Then I heard a voice. The voice said, this is how it looks like to have multiple sex partners. This is soul tie. Some people don't know what soul tie is. Soul tie is a spiritual connection that is established the moment you have kind of knowledge of someone. Genesis chapter 2 verse 24 says, Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. This is the way God created sex. Sex is not a deadly thing. Sex is it's a holy thing. It is a spiritual thing too. But what God created was not the type we see everywhere on the streets, in the street corners, in club, nightclubs, in protests. God never created that sex. That one is the corrupted version, version of sex. What God created was matrimonial sex. And for hundreds of years, humans knew that you can sleep with a lady except you do all the marriage rights. You have to be given the legal rights by the parents and by both families before you can go into consummation of that relationship. But um, as men started falling away from the truth, a lot of people decide to do it their own way, but there are implications. The fact that you choose to operate a machine the way you like doesn't mean that there will be no implication. There will definitely be implication. Let me also read this to you, 1 Corinthians chapter 16 to 19. What know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? So if you sleep with a harlot, with a prostitute, you become one body with that prostitute. So if a hundred people sleeps with that same person, they become one, you become connected to those 100 people. And the people that those 100 people have slept with, it is uh, a very complex, it's a complex uh, connection. I did a video some time ago where I talked about, I talked about soul tie for two said he shall be one flesh if two people come together and have sex they shall be one flesh this is how god created it this is no man-made thing it is divine god created it like this for a specific reason verse 17 but he that is joined unto the lord is one spirit so if you are joined to the lord in after you repent and you get baptized, you get born again. You become one spirit with the Lord. Look at the comparison. If you sleep with a prostitute, you become one flesh with a prostitute. If you are joined to the Lord, you become one spirit with the Lord. 
This is a mystery, but it is the truth. Verse 18, flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committed fornication sinned against his own body. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. So, this body is a temple of God. When you are joined to the Lord, you become one spirit with the Lord, and His Spirit lives in you. You are His temple. We were originally created for God to live in. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7 says that God breathed into the nursery of man the breath of life and man became a living soul. So God took his own life and put a part of his own life, a little portion of his own life and put it in man. So originally God created the human body to be his habitation where he lives. Remember what happened in Genesis chapter 6 when men started committing terrible sins, especially by sleeping with fallen angels, God said, my spirit will never strive with man again. And the years of men were cut short. We are reduced to 120 years. That same body, Satan needs it. So he tries to push you to do things that will pollute you and make the spirit of God to live. And here we're coming. When you have sex with people you were not married to, a bond is created, a connection is created. Sex is a covenant, it's a means of covenant. A connection is created. And if that person has slept with different kind of people, you are also connected to those people. Let me tell you one of the things the Lord told me some time ago, that if a demon is in someone and you have sex when you're not married to that person that the demons in that person can have sex your body they can even have sex your own spirit they can access your soul they can access your information your spiritual information they will have access to them so we believers need to be wise today sex is everywhere nobody cares many of our churches don't even care to talk about sex anymore because they feel it's a dirty topic, we shouldn't talk about it. Um, well, they, they could just mention it once in a while, but without emphasis. After all, many of those who are supposed to sound the alarm are in their own chains. They have been shamed by different kinds of sexual immoral habits and addictions. May God Almighty help His children. Let's continue with the message. This is the message the Lord gave me. Tell my people that Satan has used sex to poison more people than he used foods and drinks. Tell them that there is no immunity against sex poisons because sex in the first place opens up your spirit and soul for spiritual access. It opens up, I, I don't know what some people think it is. This thing is dangerous, but a lot of people don't see it this way. They think it's pleasure. They think it's, oh, it's my body. I, do, I can do whatsoever thing I want to do with it. It's more than that. This is an act that is capable of producing a human being with a spirit and a soul. Sex is the only legal act that can bring a human being alive into this world. It is not just bodily exercise or it's not for fun. If you're married, you want to have sex for fun, fine. But if you're not married and you want to have sex, you are destroying your life. Today, it pains my heart when I see even children are sexually active. I was telling one of my children in our scholarship scheme who stopped going to school and had a boyfriend, 16 years old, I was asking her. So, I called her name and I said, so you mean you have started having sex at this age? I can't even believe it. I can't even believe it. She stopped going to school. Very shameful. And it's like a normal thing. I saw a 13-year-old girl who is already a prostitute. I saw her 
Maybe I'll do a separate video and talk about it. I even recorded part of the video. I recorded her. I took pictures with them. I had to pay them to talk to them. Took them to my office, talked to them, and I was asking the small girl. She said she's 13 years old. I was asking her, how are you able to cope with this work you're doing? Don't these men ask you about your age? She said, no, they don't ask her about her age. I, I, I couldn't cry. This is the kind of society we're living in. And nobody cares. It's like nobody cares. So even children have access to sex. They know what it is. They are active. You think, you see some of these children, you think they are children. They are adults. They know the things you don't even know. They, after all, the internet is there. There are videos. Many of these children have Android phones. They know things that their parents don't even imagine exist. This is how corrupt the times we are living in is. And Satan is using this to access people's lives, his agents, sleeping with people, even use sex to poison people. I asked a small girl who lost her virginity recently. I asked her, don't you know, it was yesterday, I asked her, don't you know someone that is possessed can use sex to poison you? She said she doesn't know. Ignorance. How would she know? Who talks about it? I, I, there was a time I was looking for books about sexual purity. I went to different, different bookshops, Christian bookshops. I didn't see. What I was seeing is how to make love, how to satisfy your man, how to satisfy your woman. These were the kind of things I was seeing. So, we live in a society where addicts don't even, I mean, sex addicts and people who are addicted to pornography, masturbation, and different kind of things, they don't even have enough materials, enough resources to give them real information that can help them come out. I remember one day, an elderly man, he's, he, at, as a then, he was already a grandfather. He called me and he told me, Hosanna, you need to stop talking about sex. You need to stop talking about sexual immorality in church. It's not everybody that is doing it. Stop talking about it. And I asked him, when you were a young boy, were people going naked like this? He said, no. When you were a young boy, was there anything like all this boyfriend and girlfriend and this level, high level of sexual immorality? He said, no. And I told him, sir, pray for me to preach more. You need to pray for me because somebody needs to address this issue. And that's the truth. Somebody needs to take everything and address this issue. It's too much in our society. We have to be careful. Christians, be watchful, be careful. I know what I'm telling you. I know exactly what I'm telling you. It's not everybody you see that is a human being. There are actually agents of darkness who put on human flesh. Angels of God can put on human flesh and appear to people. The one that Jacob wrestled with, the two that appeared to Abraham, the one, the same people that uh, met with Lot, that rescued Lot from Sodom and Gomorrah. Angels put on human flesh. So also, fallen angels can still put on human flesh and appear to people. There are some people from the marine kingdoms. There are some who are hybrid. They are neither full humans. They are neither full demons. They are hybrids. Reptilian beings. They are on earth. You have to be careful. Let's continue to read. It is easier to heal anyone that is poisoned with food and drinks than to cure the one poisoned through sex. You cannot overcome such a trap because it is a capsule. It will not get to your stomach before it melts and sends its power into your body. How can you escape from the enemy if he deposits his poison in the person you have sex with? Uh, let me explain. The Holy Spirit told me that if you, that there is no immunity, there is no spiritual immunity against sex poison. I need to make you understand something. If you destroy the temple, the Holy Spirit is going to leave you alone. 
And when he leaves you alone, you become defenseless. Some of you, you feel wherever you're going, there is protection in your wallet. That protection will not protect you against demons. That protection can only protect you against some diseases. It cannot protect you against demons. As a matter of fact, there are ladies whose private parts are having tubes, spiritual tubes. They are connected to the marine kingdoms. Whatsoever thing you're releasing into them is not actually going into them. It is being taken by the tube straight into the kingdoms of darkness. And you think you are enjoying yourself. They are draining your blood. They are draining power from you. They are draining your semen. And that contain, your semen contains your DNA information. Your RNA information. And you are playing with your life. You sleep with somebody, you don't know. There are males whose private parts are actually serpents. Some are private parts of horses, of dogs, of goats. You sleep with them. You think you are looking for money and you are playing with your life. Please stop committing sexual immorality. It is dangerous. The Lord said that sex poison is like a capsule. When you swallow a capsule, it melts even before it gets to your stomach. Sometimes your intestinal wall starts absorbing it. We have to be careful. Please be careful. And I tell people, if you can win the battle of sexual immorality, the battle against sexual immorality, you are 50% successful in life. That's the truth. If you can keep this law, just this law, if you can keep it, you are 50% successful in life. I know what I'm telling you. He said, how can you escape from the enemy if he deposits his poison in the person you have sex with? Sometimes before they send satanic agents to God's children, they made some deposits in them. I remember 2015, I was in the office, in the church office, it was December precisely, and I was sleeping. The Holy Spirit told me he called one name. It wasn't actually the name, a usual name, a regular name of a human being. It was one funny name. And he said, so, 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 so is coming. So I was praying and a small girl I was conducting deliverance for walked in. She was only 15 years old and she has this smallish body. Even to today, she has this smallish, she had a stunted growth. So immediately she walked in, I was coughing, cough, 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 cough. It then dawned on me that the Holy Spirit told me that someone was coming. So I started praying in my mind and I rebuked the cough. The cough actually came because God wanted me to be spiritually sensitive. So I rebuked the cough and I started praying and I asked her, did you come alone? She said, yes. I, know, I mean, and I said, I mean spiritually did anybody come with you and she said actually some spirit beings followed her there by the gate and that she did enter the church compound so immediately she told me that i started praying i said god let this girl confess let her confess let her confess so i took her from there we went into the church we sat close to the altar there was uh we sat by the choir uh, pew Choir stall, and we were there. I was asking a question. Now, this is why I'm telling you this story. She told me that they gave her something to drink so that if peradventure I fell and I start sleeping with her, she won't shout. That means so that she will not feel pains because she was just a child. This was a child, the mother brought three of them to me and said, 
um, this small girl, one was 15, one was 8 years old. She said, uh, these my children, they are possessed with witchcraft. I want you to conduct deliverance for them. And this boy, they want to kill this boy. And I was praying for them. I remember some time ago, the Lord told me, sometime before that day, the Lord told me, don't allow these children into your home because they used to come and knock at my door. I'm here and I, sometimes I would say, oh yeah, come inside, sit down. And then I would pray with them. Sometimes I take them into the church and pray with them or into the office. The Lord told me, don't allow them into your home. But he did actually tell me that the small one of 15 years was already a trap. She told me that as she is now, they already put a baby in her. That anytime I sleep with her, she will become pregnant. And I asked her, have you slept with any boy before? She said, no. They already deposited some things in her. I, I called her this year. I was talking to her. I said, I hope you have changed. She said, oh, I'm a changed person now. I'm a changed person now. Uh, I no longer do all these things. That recording, I, that, that, that confession of 2015, I still have the recording till today. I have it. I save it. I was using my two phones to record her confession at once. Please don't misbehave. They could put some gadgets in people, in females and in males, but Satan uses females most. Do you think some of these people that are sleeping around, they are after your money? They are not after your money. They are after your semen. And it is the most precious fluid in the world. They take them to their blood banks and they convert the energy there. They convert it to spiritual energy, different kind of energy. And they use it to fight against humanity. When people meet me, pastor pray for me, pastor pray for me, nothing is moving. And you're sleeping around. Why will things move for you? We have to be careful. This message is quite long. So let me try to finish it in time. He said to me, Hosanna, weep for men, because unstable he shall continue to be until he stops living in sexual sins. I have spoken, but no one listened. Yet I will continue to speak if any of them will hear and repent. My son, tell them that having illicit sex attracts demons. Then I saw a light that shone from the sky and the light Yes, through the roof of a house so that I could see what was happening within. I was taken to, I think, three houses and I was looking from, from the sky. And I saw this house. I saw demons were outside the house surrounding in their numbers. There were many. Two persons were on the bed having sex in the house. There was a foam on the bed, but when I looked closely, I saw that they were not actually lying on the foam directly. I saw some sticks, they were tied together, they were used to weave a mat. And the mat was spread on top of the bed, the wood-like mat was spread on top of the bed, and the, pe the people uh, that were having sex were actually lying directly on the wood, on the mat like woods that we are woven. Then I heard the voice of the Holy Spirit saying, This is why many of those who sleep with those they are not married to fall sick. The wooden mat on which they lie is an infliction of diseases on those who disobey me. Then I saw demons in the room and under the bed on which they were lying. The light in the room was put out. Then I heard a cry as sharp as a whistle. It was very brisk. It went out of the room. I saw demons in the room and under the bed on which they were lying. The light in the room was put out. Then I heard a cry as sharp as a whistle. I heard a cry. But it was very brisk. It went out of the room with speed. Then I heard a voice saying, This young brother on the bed is a Christian. Demons just quenched his light. And my spirit just departed with a cry of lament. 
He has destroyed our fellowship with Him. Remember in the first Corinthians chapter 6 that we read at the beginning of this message, the Bible says that our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit where the Spirit of God dwells. Our body is the temple of God. The Spirit of God lives in us and whosoever destroys God's temple, God will destroy. This sin is so powerful that Satan is using it against God's children and he's succeeding a lot. Children of God, we have to be wise. A lot of people are just empty cans, empty drums, making noises everywhere. But in essence, the Spirit of God has left them. They are just noisemakers, like Saul, who was still occupying the position of the king of Israel when he had lost the throne. Spiritually, he wasn't the king anymore, but he was parading himself as a king. This is what sexual immorality has done to a lot of God's children. May God deliver us. As I looked, I saw a slippery substance. Substance was sprinkled on the ground, on the floor. It was so slippery that it is impossible for anybody to walk on it. I saw demons pouring on it a substance that looks like powder. So they were pouring powder upon the uh, slippery substance that was on the floor. As soon as they made it walkable, they poured this powder-like substance on top of the slippery substance. And as soon as it was walkable, some little demons came into the room. Meanwhile, the brother, the Christian brother, and the woman were still on the bed having sex. These demons brought in a kind of false light. They brought in a light. A light. It was a false light. I understood that the spirit, that the light was the spirit of lukewarmness. It was to make the brother feel warm in sin and also give him a false assurance that his light is still on. This is what a lot of people do. They try after committing sexual immorality. They try to speak in tongues. If they could still speak in tongues, they said, yes, the Spirit of God is still with me. Or maybe they lead prayers in church. They say, ah, this brother, you're trying so well. God mightily use you today. Listen, you may be operating under grace. It could also be that the Holy Spirit had left you, but because of your mastery, probably you were very eloquent, probably you are uh, you have a lot of wisdom. You are a naturally endowed person. You, you can talk. You have charisma. But the Holy Spirit is no longer there. So it is your eloquence that is with you. And you, you have this natural ability to convince people. And you think, oh, the Spirit of God is, is still with me. Oh, the power of God is moving even though I committed sin. Even though I can still sleep around and jump on the pulpit. I will still do very well. You are deceiving yourself. There are lots of empty drums making noises everywhere. But they have lost the Spirit of God. If you're one of those... Please call yourself to order and begin to start reconciling yourself back to the Lord. This is very, very important. If you reconcile yourself back to God, He is going to forgive you. The Spirit of God explained to me, saying, The slippery substance you see on the floor of the room is my anointing that makes my children inaccessible. I can say this was a kind of substance that was sprinkled on the floor. All I knew was that it was very slippery and it was impossible for someone to walk on it. Now, look at how demons have come to the same place that once burned with my fire. This lamp you see is a false spirit that Satan gives to those who fall into sin. Soon, Satan will cause to grow in his heart a thick forest of doubt and unbelief. Satan does not send people to seduce my children except he possesses them first with demonic spirits so that they can defy my children. 
he is saying that Satan does not just send his agents to tempt God's children, but he possesses his own agents with demonic spirits. Because he knows if he succeeds in making a child of God to sleep with a possessed sister or possessed brother, the demons in that person will have full-blown access into your life, into the life of the young, uh, of, the, of the child of God. How? Because it is God's own making. It's natural. Sex makes two flesh to be one. So if this flesh is already possessed and you join yourself to the flesh that is possessed, you too will become possessed. That is the truth. Then another house was stripped open. It was like the roof was removed and I was seeing what was happening inside. This time around, I saw a very fat man. He was really very, very fat and lazy. There were little kids in the house. There were kids in the house playing. The whole children in the house were all playing, but only sexual plays. They were all corrupt. They were playing sexual plays. Then I heard the voice of the Lord said to me, This lazy man did like Eve, who after becoming corrupt, did not seek for help, but out of wickedness convinced her husband to eat. This father of children exposes his children to sexual content at this early age. Now, all these children are possessed with marine spirits. They are the prostitutes of tomorrow, unless they repent. I will open up the days of pains for all such parents and cause them to live in them because they planted evil weeds in the hearts and spirits of their innocent ones. Tell my people that every child who sees their parents in the act of sex but refuses to turn away his or her face but washes them is cursed. This is serious. This is a secret that the devil is using to destroy families and the destinies of young people. The truth is, I've been doing counseling for many years. I talk to young children. As a matter of fact, there is a girl who is 15 years old plus now. She will be 16 by June 5. On the 5th, she will be 16 years old. She's already living with a boy. She told me that the stepfather was abusing her for far back to when she could remember. I felt so bad. Stepfather. And that he would put blue films and make her wash them. This is how a lot of parents spoil their children. I've talked to many children. They, one of them told me that she started watching pornography from her father's... She wasn't actually the father of the man, but she was, um, she was a, house, a house help to this man. And whenever this man's phone, you know, all these men who are not so good with technology, he would take the phone to this little girl and say, oh, um, help me set this my phone. So this little girl would say, okay, I'm going to take my time to set it. So she would go into her room open this man's phone and start watching these sex videos. She's cohabiting right now. I asked a boy, how were you able to know what sex is? He said, oh, his father used to have all those DVDs at home that whenever the father is not around, he would slot them in and watch. A lot of people have corrupted their own children like this fat, Lazy men I saw in the vision. Not just that too. Some parents are so careless. Very, very careless. That, okay, for instance, look at some of the places with very high rates of poverty. How could you have six children and a father in one room? And all the children were born in that same room. They would say, Junior, I hope you are, you are sleeping now. They, they will check if the children are sleeping. Hey, go to bed, go to bed. Why? 
If you know you don't have money, why corrupt those children? As a matter of fact, poor people like giving birth to many children. Most poor people, that's what they do. Some who are even rich are so careless. They could leave their doors open and their children could walk in. Some could have very noisy sex. And their children would become awake and be disturbed. I'm telling you some of these things from what I hear from some of these youths. Parents, a lot of parents plant evil seeds in their children's hearts. And it is very, very painful. You need to change. Then I was taken to another house. And from the sky, the roof was removed. In this house, I saw three ladies. And instantly I understood that there were three of them were having a romantic relationship. Um, these are some of the things I saw there. I saw that there were uh, goats in the room, like jewelry, nose rings, and there were wigs and seductive words in that room. Then I heard a voice saying, the earth itself vomits you. How much more the heaven of God. Happier are animals than you. For they never debase themselves like you do. Your condemnation is certain. Those of you who say, oh, this is the way I was born. This is the way I was born. I'm only attracted to the same sex or I'm attracted to both sexes. Something is wrong. It wasn't like this in the beginning. It could be a demon. It could be uh, the things you have been, it could be the things you have been exposed to while you were a child. It could be the level, the kind of orientation you received as a child. Let us know that the world and the time we're living in right now is not funny anymore. Satan is launching a lot of attacks. And we have to be wise as a church. We have to be wise as Christians. For those of you who have gone astray and you want to give your life to Christ, I want to pray with you. Meanwhile, let me let you know uh, the link to this revelation is in the description box. You can click it, go and read everything. Let me pray with you. Father God, thank you for giving me this message and for enabling me to produce a video. Lord God, I ask that you help as many that are in chains to be loosed in the name of Jesus. May the Lord help you. May the power of the Lord help you to break free in the name of Jesus Christ. You are free. You are delivered from every sexual bondage, from every sin, be it immorality, adultery, fornication, masturbation, uh, pornography, lust. Be delivered in the name of Jesus. May the Lord God Almighty set you free. Let the yoke be broken today. Lord, forgive your children, wash them, and accept them into your kingdom. Receive grace from this moment. Receive grace, receive grace to continue living the life of holiness. From this moment, may you never look back again. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In case you want to reach me, my contact details are on the screen. Feel very free to reach me. I'm very, very accessible. Uh, you can reach me on email, WhatsApp, Signal, uh, I'm very, very free to assist you. Let me let you know one thing. You know why I do this thing with passion? It is because my reward is in heaven. Yes, my reward is in heaven. I know by God's grace I'm going to make it. And I want to labor for the Lord so that when I go to rest, I will know that I really did my best. In case you have not subscribed, please subscribe to this YouTube channel, Biblical Sexual Purity, and turn on the notification bell. Please refer someone to this channel and also our website, biblicalsexualpurity.com. Um, you can also subscribe to our ministry channel, The Narrowest Christ for All Nations, and uh, Eagle Ayopuna Global Outreach Incorporated. God bless you.